Remember this, for it is as true as true gets. Your body is not a lemon. You are not a machine. The creator is not a careless mechanic. Human female bodies have the same potential to give birth well as aardvarks, lions, rhinoceri, elephants, moose, and water below. Even if it has not been your habit throughout your life so far, I recommend that you learn to think positively about your body. Alright, so I'm going to do a video on my home birth experiences. I think I'm just going to start off with what resources you can use to research the topic of home birthing if this is a subject you're interested in. I highly recommend any of the books by Ina Mae Gaskin. And there's a documentary called The Business of Being Born. It's on Netflix. Amazing documentary. When I had heard of this documentary, it was uh, when we had just gotten married and we were just blown away. We watched this documentary and we were like, yeah, we are going to have a home birth. That's amazing. And we just kept doing research on the topic. And we were just so inspired. It made perfect sense. We weren't even pregnant yet, but we had already decided. When we decided to have children, we're going to have a home birth. Also going to put a couple links to peer-reviewed published journals on the safety of planned home births with low-risk, healthy, pregnant women in the description box below. There's one recent one in particular I want to share with you. It's very in-depth, and it's published in the Journal of Midwifery and Women's Health. I'm not here to tell everybody watching that you all should have home births if you decide to have a baby. That is not my goal here. I'm really just sharing my experience and what I love about home birthing. I chose to have home births with both my children because I couldn't imagine going to a hospital and being in a sterile environment where I had to lay in a bed, hospital bed and, and have nurses coming in and out that I didn't know personally. Being like hooked up to monitors was not something I wanted. I wanted to be roaming around freely in my most comfortable environment. I wanted to be at peace where I was. After researching and learning about what home, birth enta home birthing entails and learning about what hospital birthing, birthing entails, I knew that I would feel safest having a home birth, being at home giving birth and not at the hospital. Of course, if my midwives, you know, in the midst of labor, even before labor comes in, if they felt like I was all of a sudden became a high risk pregnancy, of course. I would trust my midwives and I would have a hospital birth if that was needed. I wanted to try having a home birth first because I felt that was the safest, most natural environment for me. A woman, as long as she lives, will remember how she was made to feel at her birth. So flash forward, we got pregnant on the first try, we, weren't, we didn't want to um, have a baby for a couple of years and we decided we were ready and got pregnant that, that month and we were so excited. I researched the midwives that were in Orange County because we were living in California at the time. And I specifically was looking for a CPM, a certified professional midwife. I wasn't looking for a nurse midwife. And I met this lady, Donna, and she was, I just instantly clicked with her. I felt so happy and comforted and at peace when I was with her. She was amazing. She actually lived in San Diego. She drove down to my house in Orange County for every appointment. She would come to my house, she would check the baby with a Doppler, like the baby's heartbeat, and we would talk about how to prepare ourselves for labor, and I actually went to hypnobirthing, a hypnobirthing class, when I was uh, pregnant with Elvis. Hypnobirthing is kind of like relaxation techniques to help you relax your birthing muscles through the contractions, which they call pressure waves. Everything is about the power of your thoughts and everything. They say like it can help ease the pain, and some women experience pain-free births. So I was like, heck yes, I'm all for that. I want to try that. <laughs> I want to have a pain-free birth. That was not my experience at all. <laughs> my birth experience with Elvis and my birth experience with Sandy were very similar. It's funny because when I was pregnant with Sandy, so many people told me that my labor was going to go so much faster because it was my second time. The labor with Elvis from start to finish was about 26 hours long. And my labor with Sandy from start to finish was about 24 hours long. But the hard parts were like, where I'm like screaming profanities and yelling out like, I'm never doing this again. That part was about five and a half hours with Elvis and, or with Sandy and about, I think it was like seven and a half hours with Elvis. Labor is like the biggest marathon of your life that you'll ever experience in your life. Nothing compares to it. I went into birth excited and happy and really looking forward to the experience regardless of what you know hypnobirthing and other people's experiences where that it was euphoric or they have orgasms or you know they didn't experience it as painful i trusted my body and i believed that that could happen but i also knew that if that if 
that wasn't my experience, I knew that I could still get through it, even if it was painful. I went into labor late in an evening. It was very mild, so I went through that type of feeling all night. It was on and off, and we were really excited because we felt like, wow, this is really happening. I'm having consistent contractions, and Andrew was so amazing. I remember him being like, okay, babe, what do you need? I'm like trying to stay all calm because like the contractions were getting stronger, but um, I could handle it. And I told him, I said, okay, get out a pad and paper. I have a list of things I'd like you to do and get done for the day before we have the baby. He's like, sure. And he's just like so into it. He's such an amazing guy. I'm like, please, can you take out the trash and sweep the floor? So I wanted the house to be like immaculately clean. And I want you to buy me fresh coconuts. And I want you to buy stuff to make vegan chili for the midwives. So he did all that. He did everything. He brought me home a fresh, like delicious green juice from Mother's Market. So we called my midwife. Andrew was talking to her on the phone and said, you know, I think it's time. She's going through contractions. He was telling Donna, my midwife, how long the contractions were and how short the break was in between contractions. So she brought her other, it was her and another midwife that she brought and a, a doula who I had met in a few of the meetings. So I knew who these ladies were and I felt comfortable with them. And they were motherly and gentle and quiet and peaceful. And even if you have a hospital birth, hiring a doula is something that you can most definitely do. A doula is there to help you and to help you relax and to help give you confidence and bring you what you need. Both midwife experiences that I had, I had two different midwives, both midwife like with Elvis and with Sandy, they didn't check me unless I wanted to be checked. They never said, oh, it's time for me to check your vagina, spread your legs open, it's time to be checked. <laughs> there was none of that going on. It was only if I felt comfortable and if I felt like I wanted to know how far along I was. Donna explained to me how sometimes if we like check and and like tell ourselves how far along we are with a certain number it can be discouraging and it can make us feel like we're not getting anywhere slow your labor down or make things harder and I remember feeling like I was pretty far along because I had been in labor for such a long time and I felt like it was really painful I said yeah I do want to get checked and she checked me she said I was three centimeters dilated and that was such a disappointing blow to me I was like how is that possible I've been in labor for such a long time and she said you know I think it might be a while. We're gonna we're gonna go and get some coffee down the street. And Andrew and I looked at each other like, what? Like you're not staying? She said, well, we want you guys to be able to be alone. A lot of times when you're alone, it helps your labor go quicker when you have passion. And she told us, she said, get naked, go into your room and just relax together. I'm like, relax? I can't relax. This is terribly painful. Check out this awesome TED talk called We Must Put the Sex Back Into Birth. I'll put the link in the description below. That real exact understanding and feeling of what it felt like kind of went away for me after a month or two from both births. But I remember it saying that it felt like the worst possible menstrual cramp you could ever imagine that brings you to your knees and no position eases up that pain. That's what a contraction felt like for me. And then it got the feeling got worse and worse and worse to where it was literally crippling. I was crying and <laughs> I lost all that like calm consciousness that I thought I was going to have when I went to the hypnobirthing classes and I remember saying to the tape, because there's like a tape that you're supposed to have on that tells you like relax your birthing muscles and everything. I remember saying, that hypnobirthing tape is bullshit. I remember saying that. I remember just being so mad because <laughs> it wasn't what I thought it was going to be and it was way more painful than I could have ever possibly imagined. Then I decided, okay, I'm going to get into the bathtub and I was trying to relax. I remember like flashing around, flashing around like I was like a big whale in a bathtub. That's what it felt like. And I remember looking up at Andrew, it was just the two of us at that point, and I was looking up at Andrew and I said, drugs don't sound half bad right now. And that was like a really huge thing for me to say because I haven't taken so much as a Tylenol in the last nine years. About seven years ago, I got a cavity filled without Novocaine. The nurses looked at me like I was crazy. That's how strong I am about not taking medication or drugs. And I just feel better not taking anything. So for me to say that to him was a really huge deal. He knew at that point that I was, I was having trouble. And I even heard myself say it and being like, what am I thinking? Why am I saying this? And for me, uh, going to a hospital was not an option for me unless it was medically necessary. There was no way I was going to go to a hospital just because I was in a lot of pain. It just wasn't in within me to want to do that. I knew that I didn't want to go to a hospital, but I remember saying that almost in like a sarcastic tone, like this 
really sucks. I was in so much pain. And I, I remember yelling at Andrew, like, please call the midwife, just get her back here. I need Donna right now. Like I needed her needed her to tell me something that would make me feel better. Andrew said all the right things that he was supposed to say. He did all the right things to try to help me ease my mind and be there for me. But hearing it from him just wasn't the same because he had never gone through it before. So nothing he said really made a difference to me. I was like, you don't even know what this feels like. This is terrible. And Donna came back because um, I asked her to come back. So of course she came back. So what do you need? How can I help you? And I said, just like lend some advice to me. Like help me, what, help me. This is so bad. Why is this taking so long? She said, well, let's get you out of the tub. Maybe that can change up things. So she got me out of the tub and I immediately threw up and I, and I was like, threw up right in the toilet. I was right by the toilet. And I looked at her like, oh, I just felt so distraught. Like, why did that happen? She reassured me that it was completely normal. And then she, I asked her to check me again. I was still only at three centimeters. I was trying to relax within my body, but I didn't realize that I was not relaxing my birthing muscles. I was trying to relax my arms and my face and my legs, but this part, this part where it really hurt that is where I was not relaxing because it was really hard so when I was feeling these contractions I just could not let my body go I could not let it relax and I remember Donna came in the room and I was like Donna help me and she came in and she goes Ellen look at me she just tried needed me to like focus and get my attention she said listen to the lady on the tape and I was like the lady relax your birthing muscles She's like, relax those muscles right there. If you don't relax those muscles, you're never going to progress. I went, oh, oh, like I finally got it. I'm not letting it happen because I was so tense up there. I was not letting go of my own advice. My own advice was to say, oh, I'm going to relax. But I couldn't even do it. I wasn't doing it in the middle of labor. As soon as she said that, a shift took place and everything changed. My labor went from three centimeters to eight centimeters within just a few hours. I could feel a shift because the contractions didn't go away. And this is what people call transition. And I remember saying, it's not stopping. Why isn't it going away? And then when Donna came up to me a few hours later and said, do you want to get checked? I'm like, oh, you think I should get checked? That means something probably really is happening. I was laying on the bed. She said, you're eight centimeters. And I looked at her and was like, oh, what? And then right at that moment, my water broke. And it was just such an exciting moment. So I stepped into the birthing tub and as soon as my butt hit the water, I moaned like a wild animal. I have to push and I could feel myself. Like it was like this incredible urge to push. <coughs> Anyways, so where was I? My midwife told me not to push. She actually told me to resist the urge to push until the very last moment, till I could no longer hold so I can no longer not push, and then I should push. And that was really, really hard to do because I really just wanted to get that baby out of there. I pushed for about 40 minutes and Elvis came out beautiful and just amazing. It was the most euphoric experience of my life. I was so proud of myself. I was like on the biggest high of my life. I couldn't even explain to you how happy and proud I was of myself. And Andrew was so proud of myself as well by like my power and the ability that I had within myself. I remember him looking at my eyes and like, I've never been more proud of you in my entire life. Like you are a goddess. Oh yeah, and also when I was holding Elvis, I was so excited. My midwife was like, do you want to see if it's a boy or a girl? And I was like, oh yeah. It like didn't even think, I didn't even occur, it didn't even occur to me to check if it was a boy or a girl. Um, so then we checked, and of course it's a boy, and it was Elvis. This is not Elvis, this is Sandy, in case you don't know. And we were all crying and so happy, and everything was perfect and beautiful, and we didn't have to stay in a hospital for a day or anything. We were already at home in the comfort of our home. I will say, the, because I didn't listen to Donna, my midwife, to not, like, to not push till I absolutely could not hold it any longer, I did tear a few, a little bit, so I had three stitches. She did three stitches at home, and it did take a full six weeks of recovery, and six more weeks after that until sex wasn't painful anymore. After that time, I realized that I was gonna listen to my midwife the next time, because <laughs> I really didn't want to tear the next time. The midwives cleaned everything up for me, for us. They cleaned all the birthing supplies up. When they left, it felt like nothing had happened. The midwives left us all tucked and cozy in bed. We weren't in like a hot, sterile hospital room. Actually in Maui, if you give birth at a hospital in Maui, the dad is not allowed to, to stay overnight. Can you believe that? That is so crazy. Mom has to spend the night alone with her baby, just given birth. That partner support is so important. I think that is the craziest rule. It's not very progressive, that's for sure. It was like four in the morning by that time 
and I was just on such a high. I was wide awake. I had not had slept for two days. We were just like in, laying in bed, and, and I look, I'm like holding baby Elvis. I'm like, isn't this amazing? And the midwives had left already, and it was just us. And I look over at Andrew, and he's like falling asleep, and he's like, how are you even awake right now? Like he couldn't even stay awake because he wasn't on that like same euphoric high. Okay, round two. Get pregnant again, I'm in Maui this time. I met another midwife who was also a CPM. Daddy's home. <laughs> oh, All right, Andrew got home. He's playing baseball outside with Elvis. Hey, Elvis, wanna say hi? Hi. Sandy is sitting out there watching them. You know, a little like bouncer thing. Basically, Sandy's birth was pretty similar. And I thought that I would do a better a better job at giving birth because I knew how to relax my birthing muscles this time but it was still extremely hard for me to do that and it was the same thing like I asked to be checked because I thought I was far along nope only three centimeters happened twice that way same as before it was so funny and it happened around the same time of day too there was this one really special moment where I was in the middle of the hallway naked of course because all your clothes end up off when you're at home because there's no reason to keep them on, right? It's hot. I'm like sitting in the hallway, just like relaxing in that piece of the in-between times of those contractions that were just rocking my world. Elvis came up and he wrapped his arms around my neck and he said, you're doing such a good job, mommy. And he kissed my cheek. And Linda, Linda looked at me and she said, you look like a goddess. I knew I wanted Elvis to be there. Um, it made a lot of sense to me for Elvis to be at the birth because, and at hospitals, you know, generally children, in America at least, I don't know about other countries, but in North America, children are not really allowed into the labor and delivery area because it gets in the way of the nurses and all that stuff. But at home, of course, your children can be there if they are comfortable and if it's something that they want to do to be a part of. And he really wanted to be a part of it. He was so excited about it and we actually got him like a little home birthing children's book that my midwife gave us was like explaining about what happens and how mommy's gonna make lots of noises and lots of sounds and she's gonna moan, it's gonna be painful, but she's gonna be just fine. Her body knows exactly what she's supposed to do. We also explain that, you know, that mommy's gonna have blood, there's gonna be some blood that comes out, but it's good blood, it's blood that mommy doesn't need anymore after the baby comes out. I think we don't give children enough credit for what they're able to encounter and experience. He was really excited for it. We showed him a few, a few home birthing videos from women that were empowered and had beautiful experiences. In the evening, it was getting very, very painful, very hard, but I felt like I was going nowhere. So we decided to put Elvis to bed because it's already 9 p.m. and we're like, we're not just going to keep him up if my labor's going to be all throughout the night. And I wanted some more focus, some more energy from Andrew because he, he was kind of taking care of Elvis and I needed his support. There were times when my doula, Abby, would take Elvis outside to ride a bike and so that I could get some alone time with Andrew. So that was really nice and really helpful. So we put Elvis to bed and just an hour later, things really changed and picked up. I walked outside with Andrew and my midwife and I barely got there, but I did. And I was crippling, these crippling contractions where I was holding on to Andrew and I was like pulling him down to the ground. She did the same thing the way that Donna my first midwife had done to me, she said, Ellen, look at me. Look at the moon. Look at the stars in the sky. Breathe it in, relax, you can do this. Go back inside and things pick up and that's when the contractions don't stop. I like, crawl I don't know why, but I was like crawling across the floor. I don't know where I was going, but I was trying to crawl. And then all of a sudden I felt this like huge urge to push. Andrew was like trying to make food for the midwives because um, he was trying to be polite, he was like boiling some squash for them or something and Linda came up to him and was like, no, 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 sorry, go go be with her. <laughs> I remember saying, I have the urge to push, get me to the birthing tub. It was so amazing to be able to give birth in the tub and I wanted to do that again so they like, picked, they like picked me up and brought me to the birthing tub and Linda and I had talked beforehand about how I really didn't want to tear this time because I know that my healing would be a lot faster. Because with Elvis, I literally tried to just shoot this baby out like a rocket. So it makes perfect sense why the body teared a little bit. She said, um, when you feel the urge to push, I want you to breathe in. <gasps> when you breathe in, it helps helps bring the baby up to the, it sounds kind of productive, but it's not because this, ba this baby is going to come out. It is so, powerful the baby wants to come out and sure enough the baby comes out slowly and gently and smoothly sandy's head comes out or she feels around and she notices that the cord is wrapped around sandy's neck and that his hand is up here so she says we need to push the baby out right now 
so I pushed the baby out like pretty quickly. It was like two more, two more sets of pushes. Baby came out and she unwrapped the cord around his neck. Everything was perfectly fine. Um, we just like rubbed his back a little bit. And, and I forgot to say that as soon as I began pushing, uh, we woke, they woke Elvis up and brought him to the tub so he could see the baby come out. I think it makes perfect sense for a little, for a little toddler to be able to see the baby come out because then it's easier for them to make that connection that this baby is family. And then the baby came out and he was just so excited. He's, pet, he's like petting, petting Sandy's head. Oh, it was such a beautiful moment. It was so euphoric, so happy that it was over, and a little mad that it took so long. <laughs> Literally the next day I was walking around fine. After two or three days, I felt amazing. I stopped bleeding after less than a week. I was so glad that I listened to my midwife and that I didn't tear, because that made my post-birth experience so much easier, because I, I felt totally healed from my birth after just a week and a half or two weeks, which is pretty amazing. I also wanted to mention that both my midwives were extremely supportive of my vegan diet, my vegan lifestyle, and they really trusted in myself. They they knew that I was eating an abundance of fruits and vegetables. I was very informed and knowledgeable, and I took my health very seriously. Aren't like birthing stories amazing? No matter your story, we can all find value and share joy within that or sorrow. If you had a terrible birth experience where you're not happy with how it happened, we can still find comfort talking to each other, sharing our experiences and being, being empowered together by talking to each other about our stories. Because no matter whether you had a birth at a hospital or at home or you had a c-section or you're induced, whatever happened, at the end of the day we can relate to each other through that. This video is not about trying to say everyone needs to have a home birth. This is just what I did and why I have home births. You are so sweaty. Did you just play baseball? Yeah. How you was it? Good. Bye. Rastaman